Hey, Biggie. Hey. <laughs> a little bit different uh, video today on BBL Barbrosa. I wanted to... Um, have you noticed lately there's been a lot of uh, videos and story like on RX and other channels about Nassau and somebody? Have you yeah, he, that? Seems, he seems to be the talk of the town lately. A lot of... Uh, you know, old stories coming up about him. Resurfacing. And resurfacing and, yeah. and really um, not so, even less about the fact that of his bodybuilding and more about like, you know, personality and yeah. how he was with people. It's, it's been some pretty funny stuff. I so. know, I know. I really liked that that, that uh, interview, uh, the Olympia interview that uh, Dave actually put on his channel. Uh, it was actually, it was awesome. He it was just so to funny. Any questions. It was awesome. If you haven't seen it, go on, go to rx.com and, uh, and check it out. It's really, really funny. But yeah. it made me think of you because I know that <clears throat> when you first moved to California, you actually moved in the San Diego area, you told me. Yeah. And you told me years ago, and it just kind of popped in my head, that at one point you were training with Nasser. You were actually his training partner, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I didn't I didn't train with him on a regular basis, but I would I would hit a lot of workouts with him, and I actually, in the time I, I moved to San Diego, um, the what La, year was that? The La Jolla area it was right at the end of '95, and I lived there for two years, '96 and '97. So he was like at his biggest. I was right with him yeah. actually when he uh, went into the '97 Olympia in Long Beach, uh, and a lot of people, including myself, think that he won that Olympia. Yeah. So yeah, so. I saw him when he was at his biggest and when he was really making the biggest splash. How did you how did you uh, become friends with him? What happened? How did you meet him? Well, it's funny because, you know, I was there with my girlfriend at the time and, you know, we moved there pretty much on a whim, to tell you the truth. I had competed, just a little backstory, I had competed at the Muscle Mania contest um, a couple of months before we moved and we took a little vacation. We drove down to San Diego and as soon as I hit San Diego, I was like, I got to move here. Like, this is unbelievable. My girlfriend thought that I was just kidding around, but I was serious. And I actually, before I left San Diego, I actually had rented an apartment so that I would make sure that I'd go back to New York and pack committed. up my you stuff. You were committed. Yeah. I was committed. I committed. So, yes, I loved it there. So the gym that we picked out to train at, and I didn't really know that much about the area, but the gym that we picked out to train at was, um, I think it was World Gym on Garnett. Right. Which is where, you know, I didn't, you know, it just was such a big, huge gym. And there was a Max Muscle store actually connected to it. Yeah. Uh, and so that's where we started training. And when I was there, you know, back then, uh, Milos used to train there a lot. Victor Richards, for people who remember him, he, that beast used to train there a Jim lot. Jim Quinn, sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Paul Jean Guillaume, for people who remember him. Oh, yeah. You know, and he was unbelievable. And then, of course, Nasser was there. And I was a big <laughs> fan of Nasser. I think back then I was just um, in a phase where I was, the, the mass monsters were what really what I really loved, you know, I just loved those massive guys and I thought that Nasser had an amazing physique. So I actually saw him there and I said to my girlfriend, oh my God, I'm like, Nasser trains you, holy cow, I gotta meet that guy, I, you know, I gotta talk to him, you know. And ironically enough, it was my girlfriend who actually met him first. Now, I question how this happened because I'm thinking to myself, I'm sure he was hitting on he her. He was probably macking on her, you know, because she was actually, a, she was a beautiful girl, she was a sweetheart. She really stood out in a crowd and, and I bet that that he probably started talking to her, <laughs> uh, and then she said to him, I, "I said to him, you know, you know, my boyfriend's a big fan, you know, he really wants to meet you." So she actually brought Nasser over to me. Nice. Uh, and she was like, you know, it was just so funny. She's like, Eric. She's like, I'd like you to meet Nasser, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I was, I was kind of like, you know, awestruck at the time, and shook his hand, and um, he was just very, very um, right off the bat. Um, very cordial with me, um, very talkative, and there seemed to be um, a chemistry between us that was there right away, uh, and I'll say more about that later because he actually spoke to this, spoke to me about the chemistry that we had. Uh, so we were spending a lot of time talking, and and just as a you know pretty funny story to start off with is the first day I was there, you know he's you know I said to him I said Nasser I said you look. I mean, you're like giant, you know, like, I'm like, how much do you weigh? And he's like, I uh, weigh like uh, 325 pounds. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, he said that's weigh 325, and he looked, wow. all, he looked every bit of it. Wow. I weigh 325, but I'm very fat right now, I'm very fat. So I'm like, I'm like, where, where are you fat? Because I just sort of, he always wore these cut off sleeve shirts, yeah. and his forearms looked like they were made of stone. So he's like, oh no, no, feel my abs, they're very, very fat. So I touch his abs, and they felt like bricks, they felt like literal freaking bricks. So I'm like, I'm like, Nasser, I don't know what you think fat is. I'm like, but you're, you know, whatever. So 
little time went by. Um, we were, you know, working out. Um, I was doing my workout. He was doing work his. And he actually came up to me and he says, he's like, oh, he's like, uh, why don't you come in the locker room? Uh, let me show you what I look like. I would, oh, like your, shit. I would like your opinion. So I was like, wow, you know, like he must like, he must like me. You know, he wow. really wants me to come see. So I was like, holy shit. So I go into the locker room and he, you know, first of all, I, I had to help him off with his shirt. He could not get his shirt off by himself. I remember from the not, videos. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't do it. So I had to like go back there and like take his shirt off him. And I, I can't, I can't tell you. I mean, except for maybe, I mean, maybe Ronnie Coleman. But I never, I was never in person with Ronnie Coleman where he took his shirt off. But I was never in the person of somebody who was that big. Like he was, even today, he would stand out as like probably one of the massive, if not the, the most massive guy that there was. I mean, he was. If he said he was 325, he looked 325. He was not fat. He was. You know, he had a little wider waist yeah. at the time and everything, but he had all his abs were bricks. He was vascular. And Did you I tell just, him, not bad? I, I was just, I was just, I was just <laughs> like, I didn't know. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm like, I'm blown away, whatever. And so um, that was the first meeting, basically, that I had with Nasser. Oh, so, so he asked you the very first time he met you. It was the wow. first day that we were in that we were in the gym together. He must have felt comfortable. Yeah, like, because we were like sort of, you know, we were both, you know, he was doing his training and I didn't want to interrupt his workout because, you know, so I just said, you know, like, it's really nice to meet you. I'm sure we'll talk again. It's, you know, yeah, we'll talk again. But as we were kind of training and passing each other by, we would say a few words to each other. So, like I said, there was just like a chemistry there. So I guess he just felt like he wanted to, I don't know why he wanted to, but he wanted to show me what he looked like uh, to prove to me that he was fat, which was absolutely ridiculous. So that was my <laughs> first meeting with Nasser, and it was, certainly got off to a bang. And of course, I was picking on my girlfriend after, and I'm like, how did you get to meet Nasser before me, you know? She's just like, well, she goes, I'm a girl, you know? Yeah, there so, you go. So that was it. So, uh, But she didn't say anything about him, McEnroe, although I'm sure she was keeping that from me. Of course. We know Nasser was a little bit oh, of yeah. a, a woman chaser. Yeah. We all know that. So that was my first meeting with him. And then... And then um so you moved there afterwards, or did it take for you? So tell me, there's, uh, when did you become, you know, a training partner at times? Well, what happened was is that, you know, he was telling me, first of all, he used to go into the gym at like 4.30 in the morning. Really? Like back then, he would go at like 4.30 in the morning. He wanted to be there, I guess, when nobody was there. Right. Like he wanted to have the whole place to himself. So, and he probably went in, I think he went in later in the day too for a second session. So he would actually watch me train a lot and he would be like, oh, Eric, your training is very good. You know, you're really? Very, you know, it's like, you know, I see what you're doing. And you know what you're doing. You form. And, you know, so, you know, of course, that was you know, a huge compliment. A huge compliment to me. And he would actually then he would ask me a lot about, like, my diet. Um, and he was very impressed with my diet and how I laid my diet out. He would be like, how much protein are you eating? I mean, he was very interested in, wow. in talking to me. Um, and actually, at the time, um, at the time, I, you know, was a, a natural pro bodybuilder and I told him I was natural and he was like very very like impressed with that mm -hmm. um, he's like oh you're very very big he was like if you if you ever choose to use an abolix you'll be you could be pro you know whatever all wow. kind of stuff so he would say to me so um, basically what happened there was just one day um, now here's the thing with Nasser he always the area of his body that was probably the weakest was his back and not the width of his back because his back was wide as hell but especially going up against Dorian, who had such a grainy back, yeah, his back was like a little bit more soft. So at one point in time, I remember saying to him, um, like he trained back, and then I saw him the next day training back again. I saw him the next day training back again. I said, Nasser, how many, what are you doing with your back? He goes, I train back every day. Wow. And, you know, to he, me, I'm like, that's he, absurd. He was obsessed, yeah. He was obsessed, but he just felt like, and his, his thoughts was, if I just train it every day and destroy it, it's going to get so detailed and crazy. So, so you know, I was asking him questions about it. He goes, he goes oh, so uh, maybe you train back with me tomorrow, you know? So I was just like, now I was just like, oh, shit, you know, like, definitely, you know, whatever. He's like, but you know, you got to be here at 4.30 in the morning. And I'm, then I'm going, oh, my God, 4.30 in the morning, I got to get up at like 3.30, whatever. I'm like, but I'm not passing up the chance. You get up at 9 usually. Yeah, now I get up at 9. <laughs> so back then, you know, whatever but I'm not passing up the chance to train with Nasser there's no it. way because he didn't train with very the only people that I ever saw him training with was like Milos or right. other pros right, I right. never saw him train with you know another just a you know, amateur, amateur well, yeah. bodybuilder otherwise he always did it on his own so this is you know an incredible story in of itself because you know I get there at 4.30 he's there 
and I just, you know, obviously I'm just going to follow his training. Back then I was just, you know, I wasn't Merlin. I was just <laughs> following I was just his Eric. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what we did actually is that the way Gold's, the way World was, you know, at the time had their back equipment, everything was pretty much lined up. And there was like probably 20 back machines like it would be like all the rope machines and all the pull down machines and then all all the machines were kind of grouped and they were all very similar maybe the angles were a little different or you know how your machine has a slightly different feel but we literally did every single piece of equipment in that gym for back nothing did we miss every times machine, how many sets three or four sets per oh, machine geez. my guess and then after doing all that he still wanted to do overhand bent rows, underhand bent rows, one arm rows, dumbbell pullovers, oh, Jesus. Uh, rack deadlifts. I, I I think I'm pretty sure that the workout took four or five hours by the time oh we were done, God. and probably was close to 100 sets. Jesus. Had to be. Now, you got you know I don't know if you guys watch the show, you don't watch the show, whatever. I do eight sets per body part. Okay? <laughs> and I've always been kind of a low volume, high intensity, maybe not back then as much as I am now but but a hundred I mean that was just absurd but I had to make sure I could not quit stop yeah. I had to go I had to complete that workout to me it was like you know when Rocky in the first movie just wanted to last with the champ go to distance he just yeah. wanted to go to the distance yeah. he didn't care whether he won or lost and, and that's how I felt about it and I really don't know how I do it I do remember having to sleep like for the next eight hours like I went home and just went to bed and I don't think that I trained back again for another two weeks. It was pure insanity because it was heavy, it was hard, it was intense, and it, it was just one set after another. How was his form? Like he was towards... loose. He was Nasser was pretty loose with his form. Mm. Um, he would do as he would progress up, and he would he was he would do back then anyway. He would start with the lightweight, higher reps, and he'd do the standard, you know, a little heavier, a little lower reps. So his, his form would start off pretty strict with the higher reps, and then it would loosen up as he got, you know. Heavier. Uh, yeah. Heavier. Now, I always stayed I always stayed pretty strict, um, even, you know, throughout all the sets. But, of course, I wasn't going to say to Nasser, who weighs 330 pounds, <laughs> you're, you're doing this wrong, dude. You're swinging. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, you just, you know, you don't know what you're doing. So... Yeah, so it was it was insane, and then I'm th saying to myself, he's gonna come in here, he's gonna do this again tomorrow. Like what? I personally think that he went a little extra. I think he wanted part of his sense of humor. It was a very very he had a very very intellectual. It was smart. A very bright man. That's one thing you have to. The, the guy, he spoke. I don't know. Dave Palumbo says twenty languages. I don't know if that's twenty. I don't know. He spoke. Very very intelligent man. Very very well spoken. Very very. Um, incredible vocabulary I think that his sense of humor was such that he wanted to bury me like he wanted to see if I could keep up that he just wanted it to be completely absurd workout I think <laughs> it was. Uh, but it was an incredible experience and but he did say to me I was one of the only people outside of other pros that was able to ever last with him through a workout that didn't quit halfway in between and that's why I earned the right to where he actually would ask me to come train again because he actually thought that I was a great training partner. Now, I yeah. couldn't train with him all the time. Actually, back then I had clients, um, you know, kind of at the time, not as early as, but, you know, during the time that he worked out yeah. in another gym. But any time that I possibly could, I would train with him. And it so was, he would just call you or how would you guys get in touch? It would just usually help? be in the gym. Usually okay. be in the gym and we just be At like, the same time? Okay. You'd be in the gym at the same time and you say, hey, Tuesday I'm doing back, you know, oh, this gotcha. or doing whatever, you know, you want to train with me. How many uh, years did that go on? Like uh, those once in a while workout uh that was pretty for the whole almost for the whole two years because like really? i said we hit it off right away wow. uh in fact we would um oh even when we would go to like you know on a classic or the olympia or whatever shows that we would go to um at the same time where he'd be doing um his thing and i'd be doing mine he always wanted to make sure to go out to dinner with me oh nice and hang out um and and this is what he would say to me he'd say he'd say he'd go he goes oh the people uh, they're so stupid <laughs> I, 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 I can't tolerate anybody uh, they're, they're so dumb uh, and, and 
they can't you you can speak and you have vocabulary and you can and you can talk and I and I kind of converse with you. So he felt speak. like you were his equal, like uh, mental. I, I don't know if yeah. I was his equal, but yeah. at least he felt that he, at least he felt that he could talk to me and have yeah. an intelligent conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but most of the time he spent joking around. I'll tell you another very funny thing. There was a guy I don't know. You probably remember him, Dave. He used to compete in the Iron Man every year. His name was Jerry Rogers. Mm, sounds familiar. So he he he, he lived in San Diego too. He trained there, and he was a <clears throat> he was a he was a pretty big guy. He was he was he was pretty tall. Probably weighed about two seventy, but he never did very well. Uh, and I, NASA would make fun of him all the time because he'd be like, uh, he'd be, uh, his diet is uh, he eats peanuts. That's all he eats is peanuts. No carbs, he only eats peanuts. He can't grow on peanuts. And he'd be like, oh, there's the peanut man again, you know? And <laughs> that sounds like him. Always make, uh, yeah, he would always call him the peanut man. And every time he'd see him, and the guy looked damn good, but he, he like never completely peaked for his shows. And he'd be like, how, how do you expect to train on peanuts? Was it keto? Was he like high, high fat? I don't, I don't. Know. I guess back. I, I don't know if there was the, if it was keto back then. Or yeah, if it yeah. Was just, just more high like fat, low carb. School, but yeah. He, yeah. So he didn't eat carbs. He ate all protein and fats. And I guess he ate a ton of peanuts. So he would always make fun of him and call him Mr. Peanut or the Peanut Man or whatever. But that's how he would be with everybody. He'd always find something wrong. Yeah. With every single. He'd zone in on the weak point. Yeah, yeah. He'd zone in. He'd be like, oh, there's a you know, there's a Mr. Mr. The crappy squat man. He squats uh, one quarter way down. Uh, he doesn't have any legs. He has pins for legs. He always <laughs> will. He's so stupid. Oh, you know, shit. Whatever. And that, that's how he would act. But um, one time also, another good good story that just popped into my head is one time, I, I don't remember if it was the Arnold or the Olympia, but he wanted to meet me for dinner. And we met we met outside. And I remember Ronnie Coleman was, was standing there in the corner, and, and he struck up a conversation with Ronnie. So it was me, Ronnie, and Nasser. And, of course, I, fe I felt like a peanut. Um, but I'm just like, I'm like sitting, I'm, back then, if social media existed and phones, I would have been like filming the whole thing, you know, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, but that didn't exist back then, it would have been a great thing, but I remember, I'm like, oh my God, I'm standing here with Ronnie Coleman and NASA, this is like so cool, you know, I'm like, I've made it, you know, um, so I had to have a little conversation and Ronnie is like, it's so, the two of them talking was the most hilarious thing I know. because Ronnie's like so like, you know, it's the opposite. and yeah, yeah. like, you know, boisterous and NASA's so like quiet and, you know, reserved. Um, I don't know what he thought of Ronnie, but they had a nice little conversation. But we went to this place to eat that was um, it was one of those places where you, you pretty much, I don't know, like you, you kind of have like a bowl and you go and it's sort of like a grill and you just kind of tell them, throw meat in there and throw the chicken in there. And oh, this, this, Mongolian something. Yeah, yeah. Some, like a bar, probably, Mongolian yeah. barbecue kind of thing. And <clears throat> he's like, oh, I want to go there, you know. So we go to eat there and I'm standing on line with him and we're, we're going through the thing and the... The bowl, the amount of food that he had in the bowl, I mean, it filled, I mean, it looked, it must have been like four pounds of meat. Like, it was just giant. And and I'm like just saying, oh, okay, stop now. He's going, no, no, he needs more, he needs more beef, put more beef in there. You know, he'll give you more chicken. Uh, no, no, he needs some vegetable. And so he's making my bowl, he's sending my bowl, it's like full of his, full of his. I'm like, Nasser, I don't weigh 325 like you, you know? But I, I just, I'm just letting him do it because what are you gonna say? You can't say no to him. I know. So we go. And we sit down at a table, and then he spots a table that has like a bunch of really good looking girls at it, who are like fitness models, probably from a company or whatever. And he, he goes over to them, and he starts whispering something to them. And I'm like, what is he doing? So apparently he told them that I'm some sort of big celebrity. Oh. He's like, he tells them I'm sort of some sort of big celebrity, and that he's my bodyguard, and that you guys should come over here and like if you want to be noticed you should take pictures with him and those oh, kinds of stuff. so all of a sudden this whole table of like models he has a, I don't know what they thought it was like an actor or action star or so I don't know what but NASA had him convinced and they came over and I'm just like surrounded by all these girls and I'm like I'm, I'm putting my head down I'm like what are you doing he's like he's like oh he's, he's a stud uh, he he take all six of you and back to his room and, uh, <laughs> oh no uh, he's like he's like, I'm telling you I know He's like, you know, it's like, I'll stand outside the room, I'll make sure nobody comes in. And he's, he's, and he's having the best time. But that was Nasser's... It was you know, funny. That was, he, was, he was one of the funniest guys that I've ever met. I mean, I, I know that people have, you know, he's done some things supposedly that behind people's backs or whatever, you, or you see him in that video where he acted like a total creep, but he, he really was one of my favorite personalities that I had ever met. And... I just, you know, had, I, I wouldn't say a friendship to them to the point where, like, we were calling each other and hanging out, whatever, whatever, but we were, you know, we were really solid together, and, and he really, I know that he told me one day, 
he sat me down and he said he told me how much he respects me and how much he respects my knowledge and how much he respects my you know my training and whatever and he just that he really enjoys my company and it was just like you know I was like wow. kind of blown away by that so my experience with him was a really really great experience with him uh, and um, I only wish he would have won that 97 Olympia because yeah. you know I think that he really truly deserved it and I know that he worked his butt off for it because I saw him do it you know? yeah that's so, awesome. So, yeah, so those are some of the great stories. I'm sure that I could probably think of more, but those are the ones that stand out in my head. Uh, meeting him and, and, and doing that workout with him uh, and, and hanging out with him at the shows, it was always a good time. It was always good natured, uh, and it was always a lot of fun. You just never knew what to expect with that guy. <laughs> he just left us a little bit too early. You know? I know. You know? Too bad. But, well, thanks for sharing stuff. today, man. Ah, no Appreciate problem. It's my fun. <laughs>